Hello, and welcome to SciShow Talk Show That Day on SciShow, where we talk to interesting people about interesting stuff. We're talking to Britt Garner today. Britt Garner, researcher of various biology-type things, but also uh, host with me on SciShow Psych. Yes. And host of a new thing called Nature League, which we'll talk about a little bit today as well. But first, let's talk about your research. How is it? See, I understand, like I kind of get what you do, but it's pretty new. In general, like my background is conservation genetics, and that's what I did up until about a year and a half ago, where I got into big data analytics. Mm -hmm. uh, we happen to have a program, like a certificate program at the university, so it's basically me and like thirteen undergrad guys majoring in computer science, and me being like, "How do we apply it to elephants?" <laughs> this is the right way to go about it. Yeah. I love this, where you're like, so, I have built an, ex an area of expertise, and they have too. I'm going to go get that one and so I call see how they a, fit together, and eventually they will. So it's, it's interesting, because whenever you try to apply a new tool to an old idea, mm -hmm. you find out that there aren't many people doing it. And sure. so that whole idea of that literature review, and like, let me see everything that's been done, and you're like, Oh my God! No one has done this. Yeah. So I'm like, like I, could, an idiot. I can call that guy. <laughs> There's like the one like he's he's like 24. You know, it's not even like he's been, he's been doing it for like six months. And he lives in <laughs> and he's in the Netherlands. And I'm yeah. just like, okay, great. <laughs> like, yeah. It, so like, there is a little bit of like, am I crazy to think in this way? That is yeah. so do, like not linear for the way we usually do this. Or are we onto something? Mm -hmm. And That's I good. don't know the answer. <laughs> To that. And, but the idea is you, you're looking at a bunch of organisms, you're looking at their genomes, and you're trying to figure out things about how they have moved into different ecosystems and tracking how they are existing in those places now. Yeah, that, I mean, that is one piece of it. I call it a problem solver's caucus, and it looks a little bit like this. Exactly. Yeah, so it's like a class is in the computer science building, and I suck at computer, so I was like, oh boy. Okay. They really stress me out. I just, okay. yeah, I like playing outside. <laughs> and mm -hmm. like classes in the math department, which have been fantastic. So you want to be able to statistically analyze what you're doing, know what's significant, what's not. Mm -hmm. And then also classes, <laughs> one, one class in the business program, which you, you have to do. And that was a bigger one, like 35 other like business mm -hmm. people who are like, how do I make money? Mm -hmm. And I, it made me think about, okay, well, if we're applying it to business models, right, it's like we want to minimize effort, maximize cost. Like, this makes sense. Like, we also talk about that with evolution, like the way mm -hmm. that species find things to do. You know, you're trying to minimize effort, right? Minimize ATP use. About, <laughs> you like that one? I mean, I think about business in biological and biochemical terms and statistical terms all the time because it's the only models I have. I know. And, I, and it's suddenly like, Hank, also, it'd be great if suddenly you could run this business that you now have. <laughs> So, yeah. It's going well. Um, Glad you think so. Yeah, I do. I really do. So it's kind of like, all right, international conservation, biodiversity conservation. This is a business. If you look at it in terms of instead of profit margins, we're talking about species or genes or ecosystems, right? That's like the commodity. Mm -hmm. So can we minimize both time and money? which, spoiler alert, are super limited in international conservation <laughs> research. <laughs> so, like, we had to minimize them anyway because we had to. <laughs> and it's so cool because this undergrad guy in one of my big data computer science classes came up to me after I was showing some work and was like, I am obsessed with this certain animal. And I had no idea that, like, my major, what I'm doing right now, could mm -hmm. be applied to anything related to this. And it's mm -hmm. like, yeah, because you're just learning tools, right? Where you put them, it's still the same tool set. Like mm -hmm. you can learn computer science and be a video game maker. You can learn computer science and model poaching threat risk assessment in Africa. Like mm -hmm. it's tools. And so I have now kind of branched into the journey of like, how do we use big data analytics in conservation? So whether that's prioritization, whether that is genomes on landscapes, right? So, so what I often can get uh, like really interested and excited about in ecology right now is that we're starting to not look at an ecosystem so much as this static thing as it exists in this moment, yes. but as a thing that has been changing and will continue to change and has changed a lot, and especially as climate changes. Like, these ecosystems are going to change because mm -hmm. there are going to be organisms there that didn't used to be, and there will be organisms moving out, going right. north to colder places. You know, it may be water, like the amount of water in the system is going to change, the temperatures are going to change. It just made me thirsty, sorry. Lots, yeah. The, the, and then the food is going to change because of the, those right. things. So 
Are you able to look at that and also sort of inform that discussion as it evolves in ecology from like, we need to preserve the thing as it exists to we need to think about maybe not keeping it the way that it is, but maybe maximizing production, maximizing diversity, maximizing ecosystem production? I am so glad you asked that because that has so much to do with um, the homework I have due next Tuesday. And also, (laughs) 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 so I did another thing called last semester. I, there is this amazing person um, on faculty in the philosophy department who used to be a quantum physicist and she now does philosophy of science and ecology. She was offering a course philosophy of ecology last semester. Hmm. And so I was like, you know what? I I unfortunately am from a product of like narrowing very young. Like I did all the AP stuff and I was like, I never have to take a social science again. Here I go, genetics and science, right? Yeah. Which is great, but also has a lot of downfalls. Like yeah. I don't know anything about, yeah. you know, like it's never really embarrassing. Never took a religious studies class or Well, I thought class. Picasso until we did one of those HFS episodes was from like the 1700s. So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> was, you know, when painters happen. <laughs> I was like, they're old. <laughs> no one paints anymore. That's not a thing. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, so I am the product of that. And so I thought, hey, like I could broaden this up and especially thinking with the big data courses and like integrating myself into things that I'm like really uncomfortable with and just don't know about is kind of exhilarating. Sure. And so I went in and I thought that there'd be other uh, wildlife bio majors. Nope, me and like 12 other philosophy people. And it was People got to awesome. diversify more. I know. This was my favorite thing about my... My undergrad. Was you went that to I, hippie undergrad. I went to hippie undergrad, where it was like you have to take a bunch of weird humanities classes, and it's just like I'm here for biochemistry, but also I'm writing a paper on Zoroastrianism. But guess what? <laughs> that totally makes you a better scientist, yeah. and that's what I'm figuring out, especially when it comes to international conservation and sure. this era we're living in, the Anthropocene, if you will. Right? Just the fact that we have human influence on everything. How on earth are we going to start talking about science right. when it relates? to other creatures and not know about humans and Mm -hmm. not know about even things like uh my mind has really been open about the social side of it and things like justice with international conservation. So what does it mean Mm -hmm. to say to people who have lived for a very long time in a jungle community, right? And that's home. What is it to say we're making this a protected area because we value those 200 species more than you, right? right? And so like, it's it's not about science at that point. Mm -hmm. It's not about science. And I don't think scientists are quite ready or some of them won't ever be ready to say that Right. But well, I we think have that, to start thinking. I think it. if you're on the ground in these places, in, like implementing policies, I, I think people come around to that pretty quick. Like they're able to yes, see the, that, like, true. if you don't have community buy-in, these things aren't going to happen. It doesn't matter if you've protected it; it won't be protected. Right. And what is but, protected mean when right. we're changing the air? Right. When we're changing everything else. Yeah. And that's uh, that interesting thing about. Preservation, conservation, restoration, all the Asian nation, right? <laughs> Gotcha. (laughs) All of those things, like there are pros and cons to all of them. And we can't just have Mm -hmm. them in this box of like saving stuff. Right. Saving from what? And is it your job to be a savior? And And like, what does that mean? Yeah. Also, like, do you accept that this, that there's a, there are reasons why things have happened the way that they have happened? You know, if you're coming in and saying, I just want to make things better, that it might not be making something better for everyone. Because we all come yeah. from some form of bias, even when we're looking at sure. data, to say what is better, define better, right? Yeah. It, I mean, and these are the things that, like, hard science, amazing, love it, loved it my whole life. But, like, we've got to think mm-hmm. in different ways, and we have to be uncomfortable and be exposed to things. So, like, you're talking about this idea of stability. It's just the narrative is not quite right. Like, yeah. we, there's storytelling to be to be mm-hmm. done and we're not doing it and, quite right. Yeah, and I, I think like the, when it comes to like ideas just like invasive species, like obviously invasive yes. species are a real yes, big yes, deal, yes. but it doesn't necessarily mean that a new species might actually contribute to biodiversity. Just because it's not native doesn't mean that it's bad. So it winds up being values all the way down. Right. Which is what I, I think I was missing until I had branched out. I mean, how we think about it is going to really drive yeah. that discussion. So like there's big data and there's all this like really, you know, you'd say like science and math and, and analytical pieces. But like if you're not thinking and feeling about these mm-hmm. issues, then like we're and doing it wrong. And it's crazy to, to think that 
we're not feeling because I mean, a lot of ecology is definitely values based and, and yeah. there's definitely sort of a sense of like almost a violation of purity that sometimes goes into ecological conversations, even in science. Yes, and, pristineness, the yeah. idea of this thing that we want to protect. And that's the thing with invasive species. Think about the connotation of that word, invader. Yeah. I mean, you are painting a military scene, right? Right. And while that might be true, again, it's like, hey, biodiversity may have, right. in this case, like you gain something or yeah. all these things. Yeah. So, and, yeah, and oftentimes what you end up with is in fact, when we talk about invasive species, we mean species that are decreasing economic productivity. Like things that are like, they're gumming up hydroelectric plants, like the zebra mussels, uh, right. or they're making it harder for cows to graze. Usually, yes. And like what I learned in undergrad when I did like the minor in this stuff was like an invasive species is a non-native that is causing harm either economically, ecologically, or right. is something else. But of course, money, right? But again, that's mm -hmm. back to value. So like, how do we even look at all these things in, in a time when our species is so dominant, but like, where does that responsibility right. fall? And that is what I... I'm really excited about, I think, going into mm -hmm. with the show and also my personal life, like academically, like I'm kind of on an adventure right now academically. And like, I don't know where it ends up, but I think I'm asking the right questions, even if they make people uncomfortable. Sure. Is there a way to understand ecology as it is in flux? Yes, because I think that this is, again, one of those stories we've told a little bit incorrectly, this idea of the balance of nature, mm -hmm. just like that pristineness of nature. Like, what does balance of nature mean? Like, there is a cause and there's an effect, right? And how many are occurring at which space and for which reasons, like, is completely, I mean, a million billion right. permutations, right? How could we ever even think or teach that concept? It's crazy to think about now, like, when you really look in, you're like, mm -hmm. we're teaching that this thing is balanced? What? Yeah. Like, whose idea was that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that there's almost like, and like the, the uh, Tipping points theories or of whatever. like the tiered forests where right. there's like the sort of like the stages of forest and there's the peak stage where it's all done. And like, no, when we look, Every forest right. is a, a hodgepodge of like, this area was destroyed and this area is older, but it's going to be destroyed soon. Yeah. And like, it needs that. It needs to be at different levels of growth at, you know, in different areas. And, and like those edges between right. different uh, ecosystems are in fact, like some of the most productive areas. So you want yes. that. You don't want some kind of monoculture where every tree is the same tree and it all right. feels old growth and beautiful. Right. Because what does that even mean? And it's also yeah. getting back to that, like, this makes me feel good because it reminds me of, it's that nostalgia thing, right? But how right. fair is nostalgia when we are on a ride with inertia going that way, right? right. Mm -hmm. The nostalgia yeah. train, and is oftentimes it's even just as it is, as is the case with nostalgia for my own past. Right. We're imagining a past that never really existed, right? Because even then, like when we think of, and and that's my gosh, getting into those social issues, right? You're like America, like brave wilderness to come and like yeah. who's that guy over there? Never yeah, mind, yeah. brave, brave wilderness. wilderness to <laughs> will they please be quiet, right? Like, like guys, stop. We're trying to explore this pristine wilderness. It's like. Like human, yeah. come on guys. Like we, yeah. the way I've started really like thinking about it and thinking and feeling about it is just like, we're roommates. We're living on a thing, mm -hmm. okay? <laughs> just, just me and my 7 billion roommates. Well, but I mean all species though. And oh, all, okay. I'm, I'm saying and my, like- Me and my 40 billion roommates. <laughs> <laughs> Give or take. Yeah, not, bit, yeah, not counting invertebrates. Right. Here, we're sharing a space. The space has limits energetically, it has limits. Spatially, it has limits. But it is a changing space. The same way that when you get a house with three buddies, like it's going to be different that mm -hmm. year check-in than it was when you got it. I don't care mm -hmm. how much cleaning and Clorox you poured in. It has changed because you have existed. Yeah. And that's just the fact. And so we have to think about like, are we going along with the change and taking care of the house as we go? Like, are we just going to do those periodic check-ins or like, do we adjust it along the way because it's best for me and the other people living in the space? Like, and that is then an ethics thing, but I don't know. I think that helps me get around this idea of like these balanced and like stable things that get perturbed. It's like, no, yeah. by existing in a space, it changes. By existing energetically, even outside of a space, even in space, right? You've still changed something. Like, you know, it, it's, I'm making no, it great. simplistic, but I think it really is, it's something like that. Yeah. It also feels like maybe you've been having some roommate issues. No, no, actually. <laughs> anyway, uh, you 
have a show now called Nature League. I'm very excited about oh, it because I love so seeing excited. you talk and think about this stuff, obviously. Think and feel. And feel it. about this stuff. Uh, absolutely. And, uh, and you're doing several different things on this new channel. Can you talk to me about a few of them? Yes. Okay. I can, I can give you the, the one, two, three, four. First of all, on the, this scale, because you know what this scale yeah, means, right? Yeah, the top. Right, this one. Some overarching idea. Yeah, there you go. What's up with Nature League? It is exploring, right, nature. And we will, we'll get into that. We actually have some mm-hmm. philosophy chats and things. But exploring that in the age of an Anthropocene, of, yeah. of human influence. And what does it mean to find wild spaces and places and things when we might look around and see you know, a skyscraper. Like, mm-hmm. that's the cool thing. Like, yeah. so, this, so this is not Planet Earth because I think that although I love that and I could literally watch that for the oh, rest sure. of my life and oh, not yeah. leave the house, right? I think that it might do a disservice to people who maybe are living in a really metropolitan area and are just like, that isn't even real to me. Yeah. Like, that is that can't be real. That's so beautiful, cool, but like, I'm not making a connection to it. My parents maybe don't have money. I can't get out to an amazing zoo or go on a safari. Like, I can't do mm-hmm. that. So does nature not exist for me? That kind of thing. Yeah. And so I like the idea of like, okay, well, let's talk about urban exploiters. Let's, let's talk about biodiversity, but downtown. Like, yeah. just to make sure that somebody can watch this channel from anywhere. Mm-hmm. And find something that they can connect to. Right. Because we are just another species. We're just another roommate, right? So it's like there can't be this us and nature. Like it's just, it doesn't work that way. Like I do feel like if, if, it's, if it's really the roommate analogy, we are not a great roommate. Oh, we're the worst. It, well, it's, it's true. <laughs> but, but that's a good thing to note as yeah. well. Like, sure, you sure, know. sure. So, so, various so, formats going on. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So that's the overarching. Then each month has a theme. Because why not? And then we decided on different formats because there were uh, there's just so many ideas, right? And we're like, you know what? We can do a variety show. So the first week of every month, we do a lesson plan, which is like, hey, here are the things because mm. I teach. That's a big part of my life and what I love doing. So it's just like five, seven minutes. Like, hey, here's some things about this month's theme. Like maybe you didn't learn this, but I think this is really cool. And here it is. Then the second week, we will go on a field trip because we have the pleasure of filming out here in Montana. Montana. Yeah, yeah, we there are incredible things to go and do. And then the third week, we will dig into a trending or prestigious uh, piece of scientific literature on a topic of the theme. Scientific lit is very jargony for a reason. It has evolved its own little thing, right? Mm-hmm. But I think that when a paper comes out that really is like groundbreaking, and no one can read it except the people. Yeah. In the, I mean, that's obnoxious. It's, it's, so, it's so interesting <laughs> it's to so me obnoxious. that like, as we do SciShow, like there are things where it's like everybody in the scientific press is talking about this because there's a way to talk about it, because there's right. a way in. Right. And then there's other things that are completely revolutionary, but no one's talking about it because there's it's just like- You don't have the dictionary. Uh, uh, I don't know yeah. how to talk about the fact that this is very cool and very important. What's well, changing the entire right. way we understand X topic but, but no one knows enough about that topic yeah. to care. Oh, absolutely. So like that's the idea and that's called denatured, which is like just like a denatured protein is breaking down. It's like we're going to break down this article so you can also know why is that cool? Right. Why are the scientists geeked up about this yeah. right now? Like I want to also be ge- geeked up about it. I want to know. Yeah. So is that. And the fourth is I grab my, my poor unsuspecting friend, Adrian, and sit him across from me and he is... Uh, very lovely, very neurotic, very sweet, very loves funny. animals, yeah. is terrified of them simultaneously. <laughs> um, and he's wonderful. And he will pose questions to me that he has about the natural world. And just unscripted, I will answer them and probably shake my head a lot and yeah. have a good time. <laughs> because again, it's okay if you didn't major in this stuff. Like yeah. you can still be curious about why do animals do that? And mm-hmm. he is. He like loves things that animals yeah. do. And But he didn't go to school for anything related to it. So why not? Perfect. Cool. Great. Exciting. So I can't exciting. wait to watch myself. So I think that you, the thing that you're talking about on Nature League right now is invertebrates. Yes, because they make up so much of life on Earth. So we figured, I think they deserve, they deserve a month, right? Absolutely. I mean, it, or more, but we are bad roommates. <laughs> so the do worst. you, you want re- to, to meet an uh, invertebrate? I've heard it's an invertebrate. That's all I know about it. I would love to meet an invertebrate. You know what it is. You can guess. I don't. Well, there's a tank. I can't. I mean, I, I've been very intentionally not looking. Yeah. It's an invertebrate. I mean, yes. you've got spiders. You've got. Yeah. And somebody, when you brought 
it this in. Someone said, there's so many of them. Which <laughs> yes. makes me think. <laughs> <laughs> there, that's a very true statement. <laughs> there's so many of them. To me, it just looks like, you know, beautiful river rocks. I, oh, <laughs> not on that side. <laughs> it's a bunch of roaches. Speaking of roommates. Oh right? my God, it's a bunch so, of roaches. Yeah, on this side, like you're that. looking at, 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 at this side, but over here, it's like a jungle scene almost. So sure. they're not confused. Yes, they yeah, like you don't want them to think that they're like, oh my God, I'm underwater. How am I going to breathe? <laughs> That's yeah, a lot of roaches. It is. It is. And there's even, ah, there's even more. <laughs> for listen. flashback. Can you listen? Can you hear them? Oh, that's the worst ASMR. Just crawling around. Oh, that's the, that's a real bad. That's the that's the bad tingles. These are actually kind and of lovely. Let's see if we can get anyone. Brit to, likes them. There we go. Oh, do you have a little hiss? We go. What? Do it there. So, sounds like a little wind up toy, doesn't he? Which, yeah, okay, sure. Are these all the same species? Or They're all the mid- same. These are Madagascar hissing cockroaches. <laughs> and uh, there are over 3,500 species of cockroaches. Some say 4,000 species of cockroaches. And only about 30 of them really come into human homes and interact with humans. The rest of them are just minding their own business out in, like, the tropics. And, like, you know, I want to stay away from those bad neighbors sure, sure. and do my own thing. Uh-huh. And uh, and that's the species is, is one of those. Yeah. I'm so sorry. <laughs> She's a younger one. That's a she, right? Nope, he. He's a younger one. Tell us how we would know. Uh, the size. Ah, cool. Um, and I know he's a male, so I'll get an older male. These guys are a little bit easier to... You want to hold it? No, not really. I... These are your favorite animal, I know. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, not sorry. <laughs> so we call all of our males Rick and all <laughs> of awesome. our females Sue. <laughs> okay. And so our Ricks here, um, they... I can tell they're males, and let me find... They have little head bumps. Yeah. They have, like, basically antlers. I, know. I do like Tell that they can really it. express their displeasure. Yeah. Oh, you can totally see that. Oh, yeah. So Sue has just a, a pretty flat head. Less bumps on there, and and he has much more distinguished ones. And also, their antennae are much fluffier on the males, mm-hmm. and the females have smaller ones. And she's she's actually missing one of her antennae. Oh no! Uh, you know what happens? Um, yeah. What's your what's your what's your life cycle like if you're a Madagascar hissing cockroach? Like length or the whole cycle? Yeah, the whole cycle. Yeah. So like, there's a lot of little guys in here, but mm-hmm. they're the same species. Yeah, we got little dude here. Yeah. Yeah, you want to hold that one? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot cuter. It's a tiny little one. All right. so you're right. You've totally converted him. <laughs> oh, that's oh, that's stupid cute. cute. Come on, that's cute. <laughs> it's cute. All right, you can go back in there. All right, they're a little bit faster. Okay. So they are going to, they're going to mate and then the male will put the sperm inside the female and then she will um, develop eggs, fertilized eggs, and she will put them in something called a uthaka and then they'll like develop into an uthaka and then those, it kind of looks like a conveyor belt of like eggs like kind of smashed next to each other mm-hmm. and becomes this little like, com- like capsule almost and uh, she'll retain it inside her body and then at halfway through she will push it out and then rotate it, and then pull it back in, and the development will continue. Oh, takes that's about weird. Seven, it's like the it's microwave weird. where you got to flip your burrito over. It's just like it's that. Just <laughs> Everybody likes that. Good job. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> so they're cooking little burritos inside of them, little, little um, boy. and then they are are ovoviviparous. So viviparous means live birth. Oviparous means eggs, like they uh-huh. lay eggs. Ovoviviparous means they retain the eggs inside their body while they develop. They hatch inside their body and then they like storm out like I a terrible like nightmare. Like my shark <laughs> One time I brought um, a male and a female to a public presentation and they looked like this. I put them in the travel carrier and when I opened it up at the school, there was 40 babies in there. They have 40 babies? Yeah. <laughs> Tiny little white, and they like open the back, and they're like, yeah. Sorry, that was the. That's exactly the noise it makes. (laughs) Link in the description. And forty, forty of them. Forty of them come out. About. This is like a kind of kind of live birth ish looking. Yes. Yes. It looks like like live birth. Maggots. Um. They they look look like like little white cockroaches. Little white cockroaches. 
Okay. Yeah, and they have black eyes. And it was interesting when you were saying, so the bumps on the head, and that's not actually their head. That's kind of their armor over the back. So their oh, head, yeah, there's a little right head right under there. there. And you can All see right. the two little black eyes. They're kind of like it would take apostrophe shaped. A lot of time for me to get comfortable with that animal. Yeah. I don't know what it I is. I actually cried the first time I held one because it was just like, this is not a natural thing that I, I mean, this is not something that I should enjoy. Thank you for help making me feel better about my <laughs> lack of interest. When you lifted the little house and mm -hmm. there was like a million of them all crawling you around see that underneath, one again? That, that, that was very. You can see all the little babies in here. I was opposed. I am opposed <laughs> to. Ugh. Is there like Vaseline around the top? Yes, <laughs> good job, yes. Um, can you guess why? So that they don't climb out and get all over yes. my studio? <laughs> well, I don't want them all over Animal Wonders. No matter how much I love them, I don't want them everywhere. Like, okay. Yeah, and if one gets out, apparently 40 of them could, could just jump out at any moment. Yep, surprise. So, oh, sorry, there's some white stuff here. 40. <laughs> Let's talk about the Vaseline in here. So we put a big layer of Vaseline there because these guys, they're in a glass tank. Um, and so you would think that they wouldn't be able to get out. Um, they have these little hooks on their ends of their feet mm -hmm. um, so they can hang upside down Whoa. and climb on walls and stuff. But they can actually <laughs> climb on glass because they also have sticky pads. So they have five sticky pads and they predominantly use four of them. Um, and like gecko style, like kind of, yeah. So they have a little bit of liquid that they secrete, so it it smooshes out, and they're not like like hairy right. like flies. So they're like a, a, a squishier one. So it squishes out onto the glass, mm -hmm. and then they secrete a tiny bit of liquid, and that creates the suction. And so they can they can climb up the glass easy, but they <laughs> they cannot get through the vaseline, yeah. ha, so ha, it breaks their, <laughs> their their suction. Look at his little antennae, her little antennae all over the place. Mm -hmm. yeah. I like thinking about these guys because they are so different than humans. Are you looking at her little mouthpieces? Yeah. yeah. They're like little feelers. I think like once you get past this, that you're like, whoa, that is weird. Totally. Just, like, yeah. She is discovering the world in such a different way than we do. So they have terrible eyesight. Like it's not nearly as developed as ours. So they are using their tiny little feelers on their face and then their antennae to pick up smells and chemicals in the air. And their antennae work so differently than ours. It's hard mm -hmm. to kind of wrap your mind around it, um, how they are experiencing the world. Look at this. And they seem so cool. nice. Like there's not a lot of biting happening. Oh no. So cockroaches, they make the world go round because they eat dead things. <laughs> and they have um, like nitrogen. <laughs> you yeah. know all about that. Come on. Sure. Right now he's clean. Oh, trying to eat my hand. But it's like, is your hand? I'm just gonna eat your like, little, okay, little dead skin off your cuticle there. I'm working at it though. So I totally She's said that I it. said that they don't bite, but apparently. Maybe um, but a that's bit. like like that doesn't hurt. Right. That's like I think She's the big like to. human yeah. issue or like concern, if you want a legitimate reason, would be like spread of disease or allergies. Exactly the pathogens that these guys can right. can um, sure. carry. So they're going to eat waste material, so dead things. So if they are living, if those those thirty pest species, they can be bad or have human conflict because yeah, I've been they're crawling around in a lot of sewage. Yeah, and yeah. then they're going to spread and then you I'm, know and then I'm bacteria and viruses and, yeah. and all these pathogens. Yeah, and then also their feces actually can create an allergic reaction in a lot of different people, and especially people that have asthma. Um, I am you, one of those you, people. You have that problem. <laughs> I don't have asthma, but um, I am very allergic to cockroach poop. I have taken precautions for this interaction. <laughs> um, You're making me want to just take yeah. it away. <laughs> and Ooh. as as I get older, um, it gets worse. So the more, I, I think, and it's not my age, it's the more interaction I have with these guys, mm. um, the worse it gets. Where are we on the on the lists of largest cockroaches? A uh, second, and it depends on length or heft. Oh, okay. um, so these guys are the like the heaviest, but they are the second longest, and they the they top out at about three inches, and they lived about five years, which is fairly wow, long wow. lived for an insect. Yeah, very cool. That's it takes about seven months for them to mature, and then uh, then they can oh, keep and they, going. They, do they continue to molt after their? They do. Yeah, full and size? I don't know if we have any molts in here. Um, oh, I saw some. We well. Those might not be molts. We have we have a whole life cycle going on in here. Yeah, and so the males do fight for territory. So this one looks like 
that's a that's a dead one. Here. And this one won't move around if you want to touch this one. That's dead okay. cockroach better? No. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I don't know. <laughs> so the males, the males will fight for territory and for females. And one of the reasons I, I love Madagascar hissing cockroaches is because they have a really interesting dynamic and communication, and uh, they they have a hierarchy. So the males will fight, and the the best ones win, and they get the females. But the males have three types of hisses. So they'll have the war that the ah warning hiss, mm-hmm. like try and get you to not eat me or surprise you and and keep you away. And then they also have this. Woo hiss. They're like, hey girl. It's like the sexy hiss. hiss. Oh. <laughs> and then the last one is like a battle cry, like hiss, like I'm tougher than you. I am big and I'm Freedom. Will, um, I'll smash you. Yeah. But with more S's. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so so there's a bunch of dead cockroaches in here. Mm-hmm. Just, and they'll eat them. And did, did those guys not them. not make it to five or did this like No, that one's not that's yeah, not, not a not five year old. Size. This is probably more like a an eighth month old to a year. Um so just just getting becoming Cut mature. Down in the prime of life. And uh, another male beat him. Yeah. And so then I you know, I leave that body in there and they they can eat the anything that's nutritious in there, and they leave the, the chitinous exoskeleton behind. And then periodically I'll go in there and I'll, I'll take all those out. And then y- you, I assume, have these at Animal Wonders because there's animals that eat these. Yeah, so we got uh, a little group of them um, who's about 10, and then we just cared for them, and 40 babies popped out every once in a while, and they got bigger and bigger. You know, the colony got larger and larger, and we've sustained the colony, and then we do cull it by feeding the medium-sized ones to uh, several of our, co- our uh, lizards at Animal Wonders. Mm. Is this the only uh, species you have from, like, Madagascar, like that island? Yes. And yep. that's kind of cool, yep. too, because, yeah. Yeah. you know. Yep, representation. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. So they this just, is the they size. seem to do very well, and you apparently just buy them some weird jello, and they're great. <laughs> this, stuff. this is their water, actually. So if we put oh. a little water dish in there, the babies would drown. So this is like, it's called cricket quencher. It's just like yeah. gelatin, so they can go drink it, like eat okay. it, drink it without dying. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, you just put different things for them to crawl around yeah, in. Yeah. What do they eat, though? Uh, oh, so they're going to Besides gonna each other. <laughs> besides the dead ones. No. <laughs> we feed them leftovers, basically. So, like, we give salads to a lot of our reptiles, and uh-huh. whatever leftovers they don't eat during that day, we'll just toss in here. Um, you'll see some bird seed in here, and so that's, like, some seeds um, that we that we sprinkle in with the birds, and, and they'll eat that, too. And then if we're running low on leftovers, or every once in a while, like, twice a month, I'll put a handful of dog food in there, and... They'll eat that too. So they basically anything. That's what it sounds like. Yeah. I once killed a cockroach on my face while sleeping. I've heard this story. I'm so Florida. sorry. Yeah. I'm so sorry. Well, Florida. <laughs> Florida. 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 One of those thirty pest species. They don't they smell don't good on the inside. Yeah, you you mentioned that, but I think it's that species because. Mm-hmm. Do you smell fine on the inside? Well, our lizards eat them, Just, and they like <laughs> they'll like bite them, and like there's no smell. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I know. So weird. Yeah, sorry. Maybe it's where he was before he came. <laughs> what he ate. Yeah. <laughs> <Ugh>. <laughs> probably that species. I've heard that from other people, though. So it's probably okay. that species. Okay. Yeah, and that smells just gross. But look how dark she is. Yeah. I was thinking like that. There's That's variation so neat. in there. Yeah. God, what a hefty bug. Yeah. She Good looks girl. She looks gravid. She looks gravid. Yeah, she looks like she's got some 40, go. Gravid means pregnant. I know what <laughs> gravid means. I just, everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> that is really, that is really neat. Yeah. That's a chunk. That's a chunker. Yeah. But you can see those splits. Oh, into the cool. You can see the, the two hooks that she has on her feet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so she can hang upside down. And this is the, the weird sensation I didn't like is when they like hook into your skin. Mm-hmm. That oh, was my. like, that was weird for me. Um, but they can hold on really well. It reminds me of space aliens. It does. Yeah, a lot. I, I mean, we got a lot of our the sci-fi <laughs> stuff yeah. from, from invertebrates. Stick insects are another one. They're little heads that just, they mm-hmm. actually like move around and they'll like look at you and you're like, oh, hi. <laughs> <laughs> you can what see do you me. know? You can see me. But okay, look at just her little face and it's just like moving around. It's kind of endearing. It's kind of cute. It's kind of cute. Why are your antenna under your eyes? That's not how I'm used to it being. Those ants are supposed to be above the eyes. Don't be antenna normative. They crawl like 
this. No, and I if get their it. antenna yeah. were here, you know, it'd be blocking their vision. And so also, like, they got that big they protective thing yep. that they need. Yep. Yeah. Anyhow, Rick and Sue, thank you for coming <laughs> on the show. Uh, yeah, I did not realize how much time we would have to, like, how interested we would all be in this. But I'm ready for it to end. Do you want to sure like, give her a pet? Just a pet. Just a... Hey, Aww, we made progress. progress. <laughs> good. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. <laughs> Hooray. Jesse's YouTube channel is at youtube.com slash Animal Wonders Montana, where you can see all kinds of things that are mm-hmm. interesting, also cute sometimes, but also cockroaches occasionally. <laughs> and Britt's new show, Nature League, is at youtube.com slash what is it at? Nature League. All right, Naturally. good. I'm glad that we scored that <laughs> URL. Uh, and thank you for being a SciShow viewer. Thank you for watching this episode of SciShow Talk Show. It's been a pleasure. Bye-bye. <laughs>